welcome to episode 13 of the K-Pop Weekly Podcast with Emily Mallon. I'm your host. This is the last episode of 2023. Can you believe that? This is it, and then we'll be in a new year with a lot of exciting and fun music. I'm sure I don't have to tell you how prolific these K-pop artists are. So much good music comes out week after week after week after week that I struggle to narrow down who I'm going to review. So what I wanted to do for this last episode of the year is bring you artists I was unable to review that I think are worthy of some press time, worthy of some attention and love, and hopefully you'll check out. These are maybe under the radar groups, newer groups, groups from smaller labels, just groups that I really think deserve a chance and I vibe with heavy. Everything I'm talking about tonight, I'm a genuine fan of. So if you kind of vibe with my music taste, if you listen to the show, watch the show every week and find yourself appreciating my take on music and my critiques, listen tonight. You might find some new music, some new groups that become your favorites. Uh, maybe the next Stray Kids. I don't know. <laughs> Not sure, but um, I pride myself on kind of calling it early who I think will be stars and who deserves to be a star. We know sometimes in this industry, those things a lot of times don't work out. But I'm going to bring you what I miss this year. I hope you're all doing well. A couple more weeks left in December. Um, Next week, I will be off. So everyone, please enjoy your Christmas, your holiday break, that break between Christmas and New Year's. I love that week. For me, it's always a week to eat. First of all, I just sit around and eat 24-7. <laughs> and then also think about a reset. Think about my goals in the next year and uh, how I'm going to achieve them. And I'm definitely going to be working on some stuff for you and for the show so everyone enjoy this time. I will be back the first Friday in January. Don't worry. But let's get tonight's show started. This is what I missed, and these are the groups that I think you should check out. What do you know about Even? E-V-N-N-E. -E. This is a seven-member boy group. They debuted this year in September, so very recently, on Jellyfish Entertainment. The members were all contestants on Boys Planet. Do I have any Boys Planet fans out there? If so, you're very familiar with these guys. If you don't know, Boys Planet was the reality show used to put together Zero Base One, who I'm a big fan of. I've been really impressed with what they've done. These guys didn't quite make Zero Base One, but they clearly were talented enough to be in a group. Jellyfish Entertainment put them together and released them as Even. The title track from their debut, it was called Trouble. And this is really interesting. It's a very different take from ZB1. I think that's smart. They're right out of the gate kind of differentiating themselves from Zero Base One, who have a more wholesome, young, cute feel about them. This one, Trouble, is like more swaggy. It's bold. It's mature compared to kind of what Zero Base One put out. And those are apples and oranges. One isn't better than the other, but I think they're very different. Smart debut. And I've got to tell you, the music is good. Trouble's like a little bit chaotic. It's categorized, I saw it categorized somewhere as Baltimore club music, which is a very specific type of club music, right? It's kind of chaotic, aggressive, fun. There's a lot going on and it feels, it feels a little noise music-y to me. You can hear that noise music influence of groups like Stray Kids and NCT. My favorite B-side on this project, it's probably your text. I really like your text. Really pretty harmonies and a nice chorus and something that excites me about a lot of the fifth gen groups that I've reviewed recently. I feel like we're bringing back more of those harmonies of classic vocal groups that kind of got lost here recently. You definitely had that in older K-pop groups. But the real harmonies, the real harmonization that's not so filtered out with so many effects, I haven't been hearing a lot the past few years. And recently, like this year, I've been pleasantly surprised with a lot of these younger groups. So that's a trend that I'm excited about. Envy does it in a few of their songs, and they do it very well. Your text is really pretty. Uh, role Model, I loved because it has this like old school R&B, Little New Jack Swing, 
really, really nice. And then even more is a beautiful ballad finisher to the project. This is a strong project. I really, really like this group. I heard it. I mentioned I go hiking a lot. So nerdy. (laughs) Very like LA. I go hiking quite a bit. I enjoy hiking. And I heard it on a random playlist. A lot of times I'll let Spotify do the work. Um, And I love those deist playlists. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? My deists are always spot on. And this was on one in the morning when I was going for a hike. And I kept looking and thinking, who is this group? Oh, wow. That's the Boys Planet group. So I wanted to talk about them and bring them to your attention because I think there's a lot of stuff here that works very, very well. Music videos are good. Their performance is good. And it's a different style. So maybe you're not into ZB1 and that sound and that vibe. I would say give them a chance. This project really reminded me of an NCT 127 project. They're very much in that lane. So if you have taste that kind of goes towards 127, check out even very talented and great B-sides. So I will try my best to review their next release. But because I didn't get to review their debut, there's my my two cents on it. I'm going to be moving pretty quickly tonight because I have five groups I want to introduce you to or at least talk about. So I'm not doing my full, full reviews, but um, even fantastic debut this year. Congratulations to them. Next, I want to talk about a group that's not new and hopefully not new to many of you, but they had a release that I love that I didn't review on the show. So I'm going to talk about it tonight. Ace, A-C-E. They're a five-member boy group that debuted in 2017 under Beat Interactive. Four of the five five members are now back from military service. So they released a few songs at the end of this year. And the reason I didn't review them is they said like pre-release single. So to me, that means we're getting a new album. So I kind of wanted to wait and just talk about everything when the album came out. But I can't let 2023 go by without mentioning this one specific song that I loved. The song is called Effortless. Perfect comeback. It's so, so well done. The start of it reminds me of like a classic Neo song. Um, It showcases these slick vocals and then the beat comes in. I like that sound. And I think with Ace's vocalist, it works really well. Ace have amazing vocals. There's some groups where their vocal line just does something to me where I can say, this is the best. No surprise to any of you. I've said it forever. Uh, But EXO is the best vocal line in K-pop, in my opinion. And I don't think that'll ever change because even with these great groups, I'm still going back to EXO because they're not only are they all so talented, they have those different tones, but I mean, they have four vocalists in that group that would be main vocalists in every single group. You put in the fifth one, he's great too. I mean, the caliber of talent in EXO is unmatched. That said, a couple other groups to me, a couple groups younger than EXO have stood out vocally, and that would be P1 Harmony. I think they're the best vocal group of the fourth gen. They're fantastic. But Ace is a third gen group, and they're really, really good. Of course, you can't discount Monsta X, and they kind of are in the EXO category for me when it comes to the different tones. When you have Minyak, who's a little higher, Kian's a power vocalist, and then of course Hyangwon with that really warm, nice low tone. And then you have just great K-pop voices in like Shonu and I Am Can Sing. So they're there too. But I want to say for third gen, Ace is so criminally underrated when it comes to vocals, when it comes to performance. They're amazing. Please, please, please look up Ace phenomenal. But this effortless song, it's really cool. All of the vocalists sound great and get a moment to shine. Very simple music video here. And I liked it. It, There was a maturity. There was a little bit of a grown and sexy maturity with their visuals. Um, no, No choreography, not kind of a boy group thing. This looked different. And I liked it. I thought it was really well done. It was very refreshing. It was the perfect welcome back. They also released, I believe it was a fan song called Angel, and then they just released a song called Dear My You. I didn't see a lot of promotion for it. I'm not sure if this is an OST song or if this is just a single release, but it's very beautiful. It's a great ballad. 
Uh, today, they released a new Christmas song that's beautiful. So there's a lot of content out there, a lot of new content from Ace, if you're not familiar with them. And if you are, if you're a fan like me, they're giving us some more good stuff. So I'm really excited to see what they release um, in 2024. I, I hope it's a big year for Ace. Check them out, guys. If you like K-pop, th- they deserve so much more love and attention. They've put out really fantastic work since 2017. And this new stuff is right there with their old stuff. It's fantastic. So congratulations to Ace. Before we move on, my my wrecker and bias, June and then Dong Hyun is my wrecker. But I love all five of these guys. They have a really nice mix in this group. So I'm excited to have all five back. But the stuff that these four put out in 2023, well done. My next group, the next act I want to talk about, and I'm so excited to talk about this one, Boy Next Door. Boy Next Door is a six-member boy group. They debuted in May of this year under Cause Entertainment. That's a subsidiary of Hybe, and it's run and owned by Zico. So if you're familiar with Korean hip-hop, Zico is like a very, very popular uh, rapper singer person who kind of like a Jay Park, you know, with his own label and he's done very well. So they're on his label, which Hybe owns. I talked about them a lot when I was talking about the award shows a couple weeks ago with Mama and Melon. And what I was kind of blown away by was that how good they were compared to their level of popularity with this year's debut boy groups. Obviously I love uh, Zero Base One. I love Rise, but this is a hype group that to me, I'm not sure why they didn't make more noise. I think they're super, super talented. They really impressed me with their award season performances. Their microphones were on. They're really handsome and charismatic. And I like their songs. Let's talk about the music. First of all, we have to talk about One and Only. That song is so infectious and catchy. I kept being like, I've heard this before. Or like, I know this song. And I don't think I do. I know the song because like, it was played a lot of places uh, in the background of stuff this year. Maybe I saw it a lot on TikTok, but I knew the song immediately when I saw them perform it. And I like it. It's really catchy and infectious. And the choreography to that one is so cute. It's really fun. They have wonderful choreography. Really fresh, fun, new, rhythmic. I love their choreography for every song. Um, But Sometimes was released three months ago. So, so good. Like, I'm not sure why more people weren't talking about it because the song, music video, the feeling, it's so fresh and cool. They're bringing a really youthful energy, but it's a specific youthful energy. It's not like um, super wholesome, goody two shoes, schoolboy, but it's also not like too grown for their ages. There's something here that feels very relatable, likable. And in that way, it kind of reminds me of the vibe that New Jeans brought for girl groups when they debuted. And then obviously their next project, there's something about New Jeans that feels genuine. It it feels like high school kids. It feels like, you know, high school girls or girls in their early teens, 20s. It feels young. The way that they look, the way that they were styled, I thought they came off relatable. And there's something with Boy Next Door for me that feels the same way. Um, It it just feels very genuine, very genuine. In a lot of their music, definitely like But Sometimes, there's a little bit of like a 2000s um, pop kind of emo punk sound. And that's current and it works for them. And they don't overdo it. And you all know, I'm not really a fan of like emo and pop punk. I don't like the whiny. It was never my vibe. (laughs) I'm more of an R&B girl, hip hop girl. But it can really work when the song's done well. And the elements that they put in work very well. I love the music video for But Sometimes. Um, Serenade is also worth listening to. And that reminds me, like this group has great bridges, really great bridges. And another group that's using harmonies to their advantage. So I I like what they do vocally and I love the sound that they're able to create. All of their music videos feel age appropriate, young, fun. For example, in But I Like You, it starts off with a member in his bedroom, like eating chips or a snack, 
telling his friends about a girl problem and you watch all the guys kind of venting to each other about a girl problem. What's more relatable than that? That's such, it's just like such a relatable teenage thing. I mean, not even teenage. I'm a little bit older than teenage. And yeah, when I'm with my friends, we're constantly bitching about boy and girl problems like getting your friends input and advice and venting. It's just very relatable. But I thought the setting of that music video in school and kind of in different areas, it just feels real and age appropriate, not too far on either spectrum that a lot of people wouldn't be able to relate. And even someone like me, who's not in high school having boy problems right now, I can still look at it. And it's nostalgic for when I was that age. I remember those times in my teenage bedroom with my girlfriends. And, you know, it just feels very authentic. So they're able to strike that nerve really well. I also have to say, I love their leader. Their leader is named Jae Hyun. Okay. The Asia Artist Awards were fantastic this year. There were a lot of great performances and the energy was so much fun. It, finally, idols are dancing and enjoying award shows again, not just sitting there like during everything. You know, they're up, they're dancing. And I've got to give a shout out to Stray Kids. I think they're setting the tone for the younger generation. They stand up and they go wild for every act on, on the stage. Like even BM from Card said... When they were performing, he was shocked that Stray Kids were standing up and giving them so much love the whole song. Um, and he couldn't wait to re reciprocate. That's what it is. And that's what it is in life. Like, show the love that you want in your life. You know, you want people to like you, be nice to them, be nice to people, put out love, put out positivity. And I think Stray Kids have done that. And they've also shown these younger idols. You can stand up at an awards show and dance and laugh and be goofy and have fun with each other. Everything doesn't have to be like so serious and so buttoned up. Um, so I love that Stray Kids kind of have done that. And even when their peers or other idols would just sit there, Stray Kids would have still always been standing up and having the time of their lives. And it's a positive change in K-pop and we're the pendulum always swings. You know, we're going back to the first and second gen at award shows when they danced with each other, when they hung out, when they had fun. I loved, 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 loved the triple A music awards watching that happen. And boy next door, we're having the time of their lives, but there's a clip online. It's pretty easy to find um, of Jae Hyun from boy next door dancing this kid, I, I, it's so cute. He is having the time of his life. He, of course, knows the choreography to every group's dance and he is doing it full out and just laughing. It's like pure joy. It's pure sunshine. Um, and then, so I was like, I love this kid. Look at him. He's having the time of his life. This is great. So then I start really getting into Boy Next Door because I knew I wanted to talk about them on this week's episode. And I see the one who was dancing and just totally not having a care in the world and enjoying the moment. He also looks a little like Jungkook, you guys. More than a little. I'm going to be honest. At certain angles, I was like, what? So if you're Jungkook biased, if you were really into his visuals, Jaehyun from Boy Next Door, that's your new bias. You will thank me later. I was shocked shocked this kid what uh but the rest of them very good looking they've got a really nice mix in this group and i think personality wise it works very well so you've got to check out boy next door they're amazing they're really really good i love their songs i love their presence i love their confidence and their vibe i mean these groups amazing and we needed it you know we're losing a generation of amazing boy groups to the military right now bts monster x NCT 127, a lot are going to be gone. We needed these boy groups that debuted this year to be very, very strong. And the K-pop gods have answered our prayers. This was another one that debuted in 2023. I love Boy Next Door. I cannot get enough of them. So check them out. Um, and obviously, Jaehyun is my bias. He's also a Sagittarius and also an ENFP. So like, if I had a little brother, this guy's, this is it. This is, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> but the whole group is great. Okay, moving on. 
going back to a group that didn't debut this year, kind of going back and forth, I want to talk about ONF. ONF, it's a six-member South Korean and Japanese boy group. They debuted in 2017 under WM Entertainment. This group made headlines when they all enlisted together. I think that makes sense. Sure, it's a year and a half, two years that they're gone, but then they're all back together. Um, I don't know. I, I like that concept. We can all live without our favorite artists for a year and a half. So in September, they released their first comeback since getting out of the military. And the lead single was so good. It made it to my top 20 K-pop songs of 2023. If you missed that episode, all of that stuff's up on my YouTube channel. So make sure to check it out. I loved this comeback and this single. It's called Love Effect. And it's this like pure K-pop energy pill, fun, happy, uplifting good beat. And then for me, what really differentiates the song from other K-pop releases, it has some really cool jazz moments in the second verse. And I'm like, oh, where did that come from? It's really nice. I would recommend watching It's Live. If you guys know that series on YouTube, it's one of my favorite where they per- where groups perform on like a giant soundstage with live musicians. I, I love watching that because I like to hear their real voices. Clearly, I like to hear people actually singing. Um, and there's been some wonderful performances, obviously secrets from Monsta X is what comes to mind right away for me. Cause I've watched that 45,000 times, but ONF went on, they did love effect. It's so good. And I love in that second verse, when you can hear the musicians, the music is really cool in this one. And the chorus is one of my faves. It's just nice to see an older group doing something bright and fun. You know, every post enlistment release doesn't have to be mature and sexy. And I appreciate that for sure. But I think there's no age limit to fun, to joy, to happiness. And I liked seeing that this was their first release coming back from the military. I root for this group. I hope more people give them a listen. They should be more recognizable than they are. ONF is really good. And speaking of, you know, I think I'm going to do something for this episode. Old listeners of New York City K-Pop Queens podcast, I'm starting to do playlists again. They're going to be part of my Patreon, which will be announced in the new year. But for this week, for the end of the year, my Christmas present, uh, I will be making a playlist of all these songs and all these groups. And that will be linked in the episode description of the show you're listening to right now. So if you're interested, if you want to give them a try, it's all right there for you. I love doing that. I love turning people on to new music. And I think it's a lot easier when you can just click on a playlist instead of having to go manually find it yourself. You might forget when you're done listening. I totally get it. So the playlist is up and ready for your ears. The last group I want to talk about and recommend, they're called Plave. I may be pronouncing that wrong. It's P-L-A-V-E. This is a virtual five-member boy group that debuted in March of this year, 2023, under V-Last. At first, I wasn't interested. I've got to be honest, like a virtual cartoon group, I kind of thought, oh, you're taking like the human element that I love out of it. I'm not interested. And then I realized, no, this isn't AI. This is real people behind the voices. It's just like watching a Disney movie or any other an anime. There's real people behind this. And that definitely um, maybe helped me be willing to check it out. But oh my goodness, I'm so glad I did. This music is so, so good. I really like what they're producing. The music videos are like magical. They're magical. And there's something in them that for me is a little bit soothing. It's definitely transporting you into this whole new world. I surprisingly liked it. I really like this. I'm a big fan. I'm even following on all the social media now. Um, My favorite song is called Wait For You. It's like a mid-tempo ballad. The voices are a little higher on this one, which y'all know normally I don't love, but they're so clear. They're really beautiful. And the song is gorgeous. I think this begs like a bigger question to the future of entertainment, the future of K-pop, the future of all of this. Because what I realized in watching this, you know, I've been kind of complaining about how I'm really getting tired 
of the lip syncing in K-pop of these award shows and year-end shows and just watching people pose on stage and lip sync, to me, that's very, very, very uninteresting. And with this group, I realized I would much rather watch animation and hear real voices, real talented voices. I find it more fun to watch that than watch people lip syncing to songs that have like a million pounds of auto-tune and voice effects on them. Musically, it's not that great. Uh, so I'm all for this. I'm totally all for this. It reminds me a little bit of Gorillaz. If you guys know Gorillaz, love Gorillaz. It's cool. It's different. And the people behind it, whoever they may be, are crazy talented. And this also gives people a chance to be idols who maybe don't want to be in the public and have their lives scrutinized and kind of treated inhumanely. Or maybe they're older. Or maybe they don't fit the physical mold that an idol is supposed to fit. Authentic talent is so much more interesting to me than a face full of plastic surgery and lip syncing. So sorry, guys. I'm just getting so sick of like the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. It's the same look. It's the same sound. You need to like – I don't I, – I would be so much happier with an imperfect looking idol, someone – with a face that hasn't been chiseled to look like everyone else's, then all of this, it takes away the real personality. There's not a lot of personality in some of these groups these days. So I love a disruptor, a group that's doing something different. It's really exciting. And again, I was surprised I liked this. I'm not, disclaimer, I'm not really into animation. I don't watch a lot of anime or cartoons. I don't really watch animated movies. It's always been something that I'm not that into. But if it's good, I love it. I loved Gorillas and I love Plave. I think they're really talented. And I also think it's interesting. They do all the stuff that like human idols do. So if you go to their YouTube channel, they do live streams. They do dance covers, the dance challenges. I mean, they're doing everything the idols do. It's not just music videos. It's really the exact same as every other K-pop group, except it's animated. It's virtual. It's not, you know, you're not seeing a human behind it. And again, just have a little bit of an open mind and it's really cool. I love it. I'm a big fan. And I think this could be part of that pendulum swinging, you know, maybe there's definitely an entertainment at large. Everything's moving in this direction. Everything's AI. Everything's not real, what we watch, what we consume, everything. And, you know, I'm talking about like the normal person is putting filters on their photos and changing their appearance for everything else. It's more and more and more and more. I don't know. I just think it's different and it could really work. That said, I think the only thing that could hurt them is a concert, a live tour. But I saw gorillas. I saw them in concert at the Apollo Theater. It was so good. Um, and they just performed like behind a screen, like you had the actual performers behind a screen and like the cartoon stuff. And then the actual band came out. But in that case, that was Damon Alburn. He was super famous. Blur is super famous, his group. So it wasn't like a secret who was behind it. Uh, in this case, I'm not sure if they would want to do that or if they have to. I think the music's just good. So check them out. Give them a chance. Let me know what you think. P-L-A-V-E. I'm not going to do a whole Christmas song breakdown. If you've listened to me the past three years, you probably know my favorite K-pop Christmas songs. But I do want to say if you're a newbie or if you're not sure and you want to listen to some Christmas music this week that's K-pop, you can never go wrong with EXO. EXO's Miracles in December is the best K-pop Christmas release. It's so freaking good. I love it. I would also say what Stray Kids released last year was great because they gave us like a fun kind of cheeky Stray Kids song with Christmas Evil. And then you get really beautiful, more kind of heartwarming um, or songs of longing with 24 to 25 and Winter Falls. Those are my suggestions this year, but you can't go wrong with EXO. The First Snow by EXO is viral right now. The sped up version is in a lot of dance challenges coming out of South Korea and worldwide. So check them out. Um, there's a lot of K-pop releases around Christmas though. And check out the new Ace song. I just mentioned Ace. Their new song is good. So 
I'll put those in the playlist as well so you have them handy for this upcoming weekend and next week. I mentioned the AAA Awards and Stray Kids absolutely smashed it. Shout out to them. They were phenomenal. So much energy, so much love in the room, and I love how they're rubbing off on everyone. On Christmas Day, Stray Kids are doing a collab with NCT 127. I've talked about both of those groups a lot this year and a lot tonight. I cannot wait for that collab. There's some other really fun collabs besides Stray Kids and NCT 127. Uh, Yun Jun from T by T is going to be doing something with Yuna from Itzy. So that's a really nice collab. I love in these shows where the groups collab with groups from other labels. You don't get to see their interactions that often. So that's something I really look forward to in this year-end kind of festival. Um, I think they're doing like BTS and Blackpink songs. And then La Seraphime and Idol are also doing a collab. So that'll be a powerful girl group collab. And then, of course, Stray Kids and then CT127. The thing that made me laugh about this collab, the name of it, because they like name their stages for award shows and for year end things like this. The name of it is Love and Peace, which I think if you're a fan of these groups who have been bombarded with criticism for being noise music, uh, who now are leaders of the pack. It's just such a funny collab that theirs is love and peace. I kind of want them to just stand still and like sing a ballad. Uh, I don't think they will, but how funny would that be? Looking forward to that. There's a lot of stuff to look forward to at the end of the year. And I'm looking forward to new music. I'm looking forward to more great music. I think in 2024, boy groups will reign supreme. Um, very interested in what New Jeans is going to come out with. I think the pressure's on for them, and I'm sure they'll knock it out of the park. Of course, you have Lesser Seraphim. Twice will continue touring and bringing in big bucks. They've got such a powerful fandom. But I think boy groups are very, very strong right now. And you have Stray Kids as the kings. You've got 17 killing it. Unfortunately, enlistment starts for them soon as well. But there's 13 members. They'll be around doing tons of stuff. I like these new boy groups. I like the direction these new boy groups are going, and they're giving us a lot to look forward to. So definitely 2024 will be the year of boy groups. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it right now. Uh, I also think it's going to be interesting to see touring in 2024. You know, after the pandemic, every artist just started touring nonstop. And here in the States, in cities like New York or Los Angeles, we got tons of tours. But I think there's been an issue with a lot of the mid to smaller groups not selling out. The pricing of tickets is outrageous. And even a huge multi-fan like myself, the past six months, I've budgeted a lot more as far as like I used to go to every concert I could just because I was so excited to go to a K-pop concert. Now I'm more strategic in it because tickets are so expensive. So I think there's going to be a little bit of a swing in venue size and in touring in 2024 with small to mid labels, because a lot of the stuff that they've done recently hasn't entirely worked. And they're touring with these smaller management companies that drop the ball more often than not. Fans keep having bad experiences. They're not going to buy tickets the next time. And when they see this company is the one doing it, they're not going to buy tickets. So the touring thing kind of needs tweaked. It'll be interesting to see how it does next year. We're going to have massive stadium shows. Twice is, I'd be shocked if Twice doesn't do more than just Allegiant in uh, Las Vegas. They're going to do a stadium show. Who knows what Blackpink is bringing? They just re-signed with their label for another seven years. They'll probably do a tour at some point. You know Stray Kids are doing a stadium show. So you're going to get these massive ones. But then I'm wondering for the smaller groups, what venues they're going to go to, and how they'll sell. The fandoms aren't dying off. No matter what anyone says, K-pop isn't dying. K-pop fans are so passionate, and the genre, the, the music is picking up more and more fans every day for all of these groups. I'm in this world, and I will tell you that. When people sound the alarm like Bang PD tried to do, saying it was dying and that's why they need to remove the K from K-pop and just be Western pop stars. That's There's an agenda behind that that has nothing to do with the actual industry and what's happening. That's his personal artists uh, and where he wants to find profit. 
K-pop music will be around forever as long as we continue buying and consuming. I don't see that stopping. So I think it'll still be a giant year, 2024. K-pop is still in the upswing. 2024, it's still going to be massive and huge. I'm just interested in the kind of these concerts because I think there is a little bit of concert fatigue for some of us um, with so many acts touring. I do think we'll continue to hear different languages in 2024. So I talk about English language a lot because I'm based in the States and obviously that's my native language. But of course you have Japanese releases, so many Japanese releases, also Spanish. A lot of Latin America, Spanish speaking countries love K-pop and seeing groups lean into that, I think is a smart strategy. So we're going to see more of that in 2024. There's no way we're not going to. I'm interested in the sound. If you're going to have people that completely abandon um, kind of the K-pop production model and go to a Western pop model or if they're going to stay with it and just put in English words, which we've heard a lot of, we've had both of those. So it'll be interesting interesting to see where these groups go and how it evolves as K-pop has become such a profitable genre in the United States, in the Western world. I understand, um, you know, everyone's trying to get their hands on it. Everyone's trying to get their hands on this K-pop music. Every Western artist, their handlers and managers are telling them you have to collab with this group because you'll get tons of streams. It's all a game. It's all business. What I care about is the music and the end product. And K-pop is still my favorite. I think it's the best. The end product is the best. If you've never gone to a K-pop show, go to a show. If you can afford the ticket, go to the show. If you can't afford a ticket, no worries. Everyone has their phone up the whole time recording anyway, and you can find it on Twitter. I have not gone to certain shows and found the footage on like YouTube and Twitter. And I will do a better job of doing that for all of you moving forward. When I go to shows, I'll get better content. Um, But I think 2024 is going to be an exciting year. New changes, different sounds, different leaders of the pack. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm excited for the show. You know, in 2024, beginning of the year, the Patreon will kick off. I would love to do the show for free forever, but this is a lot of time and a lot of work I'm putting into it uh, for free. And time is valuable. It's one of the most valuable things we have in our lives. So I need to ask for some support here and there to keep it going and to keep producing what I'm producing and giving you even more. Uh, there, there's also going to be some merch. Let's get some merch. Let's get this going. I, I want some merch out there. I always wanted that for K-pop queens and we didn't do it. This time I'm doing it. So merch and Patreon will be announced in January. Um, and I'm going to continue to try to bring you the best K-pop show every week. I love doing this. And this has been a really interesting time for me doing video and kind of testing and figuring out what works and what doesn't. That will continue, but I feel confident moving forward now that I've been doing this a couple months, now that the new show has been live for a couple months. I want to say thank you so, so much to all of you for watching and listening, but a massive special shout out to kind of my day ones, my New York City K-pop Queens listeners from 2020 who are now here watching and interacting with me and kind of telling me, keep going. And I love it. And I'm proud of you. Look, a Patreon is amazing. And any donations you want to give, I will be really grateful for. But having you support me and understand what I'm doing and why and feel a connection to the show, to the music and to me personally, that's kind of an income that is priceless. And I really love you all. I value you. I appreciate you. So far, since I started this show a few months ago, I have listeners in 61 countries and 326 cities. Very cool statistic. That always blows my mind that anybody cares what I have to say. (laughs) Um, That's just on the listening side. The visual YouTube, those statistics only show me like 50. Um, I think I can export them and I'll figure that out eventually. But it's been really wonderful to see how many countries this show connects with worldwide. This is a worldwide community of people who love this music and want to talk about it and share our opinions and share our passion. How cool is that? It's so cool. It makes me so, so happy. And I'm really grateful to all of you listening around the world. 
This year has been a roller coaster for me. I feel like it, a lot has happened, a lot of ups and downs. I'm so grateful for K pop weekly. Starting K pop weekly is definitely my biggest accomplishment of 2023. And I'm excited for what next year brings. So I hope 2023 was a happy, prosperous, joyful year for you. And if it wasn't, let's do it in 2024. I got you. We're together in this. Let's have the best freaking 2024, accomplish all of our goals, reach our dreams, love, joy, wealth, abundance, and most importantly, health. I'm excited for next year, and I'm so grateful to have you here. Enjoy the rest of 2023. I will see you and talk to you in 2024. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,